Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict podcast. Today, I am talking about one of my favorite topics, which is manifestation as a lifestyle. And if you have never heard about that, it is something I have finally articulated. It's something I've been doing my entire manifestation journey, but I didn't know how to put it into words. And the best way I can explain it is it's an approach to manifestation where you start to blend manifestation into your daily life rather than try and carve out time and kind of keep it separate to you. The whole approach is built off of making manifestation part of who you are to where you're doing it all the time. You're doing it every day so that your manifestations just show up as second nature, as a byproduct of you being who you are. And I realize that that has what has worked for me my entire life. And I finally was able to kind of, after lots of self-reflection, put it into words and teach it forward. So I have created a step-by-step guide if you want to learn my entire philosophy. But for today's episode, I want to share with you three of my favorite ways I like playing and blending manifestation into my daily life. So if you have been around for a while or you've been following me on Instagram for a long time, these are probably themes that you have seen me talk about a lot before. It's something that has been kind of my constant and I'm excited to dive a little bit deeper. I don't think I've ever formally recorded a podcast episode explaining like my thought process behind these things. So I'm excited for this one. One thing I want to say, though, with manifesting as a lifestyle, it's not as necessarily like simple as like, let's just say affirmations over our food. My philosophy and my approach has been very much so helping you get to the root of what it is that you're manifesting. Why are you manifesting it? Teaching you how to heal your identity and match your self-concept to the vibration of your manifestation and a very holistic journey that involves your mental, emotional, energetic, physical, and spiritual states and spiritual bodies of yourself to make manifestation holistic. So that's the kind of idea behind the approach, but I've kind of compiled everything into one huge guide that every single day you get an action plan and you're taught how to rebuild your manifestation experience from the beginning. And whether you're a beginner or you're a pro, this guide is probably something you haven't seen before um, because it is so holistic and so actionable. That's one thing I struggled with for a really long time was everyone kept talking about surrender and embody your higher self. And I was just like, what does that mean? And it felt so hard to actually practice a lot of the different tools that people would mention, like sending energy. How do I visualize? So I take the time and walk you through and guide you with how to actually practice these tools on the most abstract um, kind of manifestation principle. So I have poured everything into this guide. You have probably heard me talk about it. It is on sale right now, so feel free to grab it. I'll put the link in the show notes, but listen to this episode if you're curious about what I mean by manifesting as a lifestyle. However, one of the biggest approaches and keys to properly manifesting as a lifestyle is doing that foundational work that I'm talking about. And that foundational work is what I walk you through in the guide. So try not to skip out on it um, if you're really serious about implementing this type of technique into your manifestation journey. So how do I manifest as a lifestyle? Something I've been doing recently is I'm sharing more about my spiritual practice on my Instagram and showing you that it's allowed to look different every day. It is allowed to one day be 30 seconds and the next day be 30 minutes. And I live by that because Every day is different for all of us. Some days are chaotic. Some days are so calm. And I think that is so important to acknowledge and be able to be flexible in your practice in that way. And so for me, realizing that my spiritual practice, my manifestation practice has always been um, something that is so flowy and fluid, but my core value and the core approach has always been the same. And that core approach is really targeting what it is that I actually want and what are the limiting beliefs that are holding me back and why do I want it? And that takes so much 
peeling back of layers and self-reflection, but it's probably one of the most powerful things you can do. And once you know what you are manifesting, why you're manifesting it, you're not even like nervous because you have such clarity. You're not even nervous on whether or not it's going to manifest and the journey becomes so fun for you. So my top three ways I like manifesting in my lifestyle, I'm going to dive into each one of them. And what I mean by manifesting as a lifestyle is I blend my manifestation practices and techniques into things I'm touching every day because sometimes it's hard for me to sit and meditate. Sometimes I can't write my affirmations or look in the mirror and do my practice. And doing blending manifestation into my day-to-day life has made it easier. Is it the only thing I do? No, some days I do sit aside, but often we have busy lives, especially when you're traveling or it's the midst of holiday season or you're working and you have kids. Like Life can get busy, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to manifest. That's my philosophy. And so hopefully these little tips can help you. So the first thing I love blending manifestation into is my food. So you guys know this. I am such a big foodie. I literally grew up watching cooking shows and I still watch cooking shows in my free time. I watch baking shows. I watch all the little cooking shows. I know so much about cooking and food um, that it's not even funny. And basically ever since Tom and I have been together, he loves food. He loves eating and I love cooking. And so I infuse affirmations or intentions that we're working on, or I connect to the energy of our desires and infuse that into our food because so many different layers to this, but one, you're eating hopefully two to three times a day. So I think that's such a nice way to reconnect really quickly and reset your intentions. And two, if you're eating, if you're cooking your food, you can easily infuse affirmations into it or right before you're about to eat, you can kind of put your hand over it or just mentally set an intention that as I eat this food, my vibration is raising or something more specific that's catered to your desire. However, I think it's so exciting to manifest with food because it makes it feel like something that is like physical is going into my energetic body because you're literally like chewing and swallowing food. So I think it is such a fun way. So I always play with the energy of my food, with my water. Um, Liquids are really fun to play with too, like your morning coffee. As you stir it, saying an affirmation or infusing the intention of your desire into it is a really, really fun way that you can get playful with it. It's kind of witchy. It's kind of woo woo, but it's worked wonders for me. And it's so fun for me. It's what one of the things that has made the journey fun for me. And I find that if you can find joy and playfulness along the journey, you're going to enjoy the journey and you won't feel as desperate for your manifestation. And when your manifestation comes, you'll be even more willing to receive it. So with food, that's one aspect which is just infusing uh, my affirmations, infusing the thoughts, infusing how I am changing as I'm eating the food. And then also just thinking about like quality of food, sourcing of your food. I'm big into like I'm also very well versed in like health and wellness. Um, So I know a lot about just like ingredients. I know and I get excited about that. That's something that personally excites me. Like I go to the grocery store for fun and I will just look and read up packaging and labels because I like marketing and I like learning what's inside of things and seeing if I can replicate it at home. Um, It's just part of who I've always been. So for me, it's mixing like a passion of mine with another passion of mine with something that I'm doing multiple times a day. So it kind of hits a lot of different checkpoints for me personally. But even if you're not as like obsessed with food or cooking or eating as I am, that's okay. You're still eating at least once a day. So you can use that as a reminder to even just say a moment of gratitude. Like, what are you grateful for in that moment before you take a bite of food? And it can just be a little bit of like a reminder and like an interrupter, like a pattern interrupter of if you're kind of eating on the go, this could be a really good way for you to stop and be mindful. So there's so many different ways you can spin kind of manifesting as a lifestyle and how it incorporates into your relationship with food. But for me, I love like being really intentional with where my food is coming from. 
Also, I fully acknowledge one, I have the time to do so. I have the financial resources to be super picky with that. And that wasn't always the case for me. I used to work a nine to five job and travel constantly and not be able to spend this much time doing it. So don't feel like this is you have to do that. It could be as simple as before you take a sip of your drink, you're saying an affirmation or you're infusing the affirmation into your drink where every sip you take, you're from the inside out embodying the energy of that affirmation. So it's really cool. And if you find yourself trying to be super calculated and super specific in how you do it and not messing up, you're overthinking it. There is no right or wrong. Anything can be anything with intention. And remember that as we go into this next section. So the next section is hair care and skin care. You will see a common theme. These are all things that I have always had a passion for, which is why I think it works so well. Um, I've always been obsessed with hair care. I think most Indian girls have dealt with hair kind of oiling and stuff their whole life. Now it's becoming so trendy, which I'm all for. So when I oil my hair, I oil my hair about every week. So when I'm oiling my hair, I will, as I'm oiling my hair, I'll get creative and I'll be like, okay, the oil is seeping into my scalp, which is near my third eye. And that is helping my intuition or not my third eye, my crown chakra. That is connecting me to my higher self. Whatever you want to do, you can be so playful with it. Um, another thing I do when I'm washing my hair, I use it as a way for me to release and any kind of dead hair that comes out, if you struggle with hair loss and that stresses you out, it's a really good reframe to look at hair that's falling out as unwanted and unnecessary energy literally releasing for you. Um, that really helped me whenever I have struggled with hair loss, especially like in the summers here, my hair loss, um, my hair just sheds more. And so when I sometimes get stressed about that, this becomes a super helpful way for me to be like, I'm releasing and a really good reframe that helps me stop over stressing on it. And with hair, once again, I love going deeper into where are my ingredients coming from? Where is the product coming from? What's like the mission behind these products? You can go so granular into these things, but it depends on your excitement for it. If it's just something you're interacting with, like when I'm braiding my hair, I'm like, oh, I am organizing my thoughts as I'm braiding my hair. So you can just have many mindful moments with things that you're already doing. If I am um, putting, what else do I do to my hair really? nothing. If I put like hair growth serum or something in there, then I'll say, Hey, like my hair is growing and your hair holds energy. So it's a really fun way to play with energy. If you don't know where to start with your hair, your hair, like there's a lot of cultures and rituals that will cut their hair completely to do a full intentional and kind of identity reset. So playing with your identity and playing with your energy in general with hair, I think is really good. When I go get a haircut, I'm saying my energy is shifting and and I'm stepping into a new version of me. And it's such a fun way to play with something that I'm interacting with daily. Same with skincare. You can get creative with the steps of your skincare process. So like when you're cleansing your face, you can cleanse your energy. When you are hydrating your face, you can be hydrating and nourishing your soul. When you're massaging your face, you can be massaging out things that don't serve you. Or you can just infuse affirmations of self-love, I think, into skincare. I think we can be really hard on ourselves about what our skin looks like and what we look like in general. Your skin is your biggest organ. So if you don't know where to start with your skin, focus on self-love. Focus on accepting yourself as you are, finding beauty in yourself as you are. We are all divinely beautiful and look at that and enjoy that and embrace the beauty in which who you are and as you are. So that's been something really powerful for me to change the way I see myself is playing with affirmations into my skincare, whether it's just about my, my self-worth or if it's about something very specific that I'm working on or manifesting. 
Personally speaking, I have always used my skincare and my hair care for like me and my self-worth and how I'm feeling that day, checking in on myself. Like I am good enough. I am worthy. I am beautiful or I am just enough or I am love. I am worthy of being loved. That has been probably the most constant for hair care and skincare, but maybe you have a very specific goal. You're welcome to infuse certain intentions for that specific desire, but I've always used it for like me and me, like my relationship with myself for me because it's something I've always loved. If you put on a lot of face masks, infuse a certain affirmation into a face mask before you put it on your face. It's on your face for 10 minutes. Let your skin, let your body soak that up. It's so fun. I just think, I hope you don't think I'm like crazy as I'm explaining this. It feels so second nature to me because this is something I've really done my whole life. And explaining it and kind of logically explaining it feels a little insane and feels too simple and like too childlike. But I really fundamentally believe that blending my manifestation practices into my micro moments throughout my day has fully shifted my vibration. And lastly, the one I'm going to touch on, the third area I love manifesting with is my clothes for multiple reasons. One, your how you show up, what you're wearing, I think makes you feel a certain way. You guys know me. I am wearing loungewear most of the time. I love being comfortable. For me, like comfort and cozy and homey is the vibe I'm currently going for. Some people want to get like super dressed up and wear like high heels and like fancy dresses. If that's like the energy you're stepping into, oh my God, go for it. Like that is beautiful for you. But for me, it's like the idea of ease and relaxation and rest because for so much of my life, I wasn't in that state. I wasn't in a state of rest. I was constantly on the go. I was constantly wanting more. I was constantly hustling. So for me, peace, ease, and relaxation is wearing my comfy clothes, wearing my loungewear. The max I'll do on my day-to-day is like wear a matching loungewear set um, because I like matching and I think that's cohesive. But other than that, like think about what is the energy and how do your clothes make you feel? Sometimes like certain clothes like don't make you feel very good dig deeper. Why? It might not just be because physically, but maybe energetically it's off in what you're actually manifesting. I, for me, like love wearing robes, um, because it just makes me feel very feminine and I love doing like my skincare in robes. So that is something, a item of clothing that I absolutely love. And when I'm wearing a robe, I feel like I'm in my goddess feminine, like, era. And I love that for myself. And it's so fun. And I really tap into that energy. So that's one way with clothes. The other way with clothes that's so fun is colors. I wear a lot of neutral colors. I am working on adding more colors that I'm drawn to, but I still have like a more neutral palette. Um, But some people are obsessed with bright colors. Some people are obsessed with like only white or only black and play with the different colors that make you feel good and how they make you feel. Like for me, I've always loved like browns and maroon. And I think what makes so much sense to me now, because I remember brown is now a very trendy color. Before it was trendy, my mom would be like, ew, like, why are you wearing brown? And I was like, I don't know, like, I like it. And she was like, that's not a color that like, especially brown Indian women wear. She's like, we don't look good in brown. And I was like, that's fine. Like, I am, I really want to wear it though. And I finally understand that like, what you're drawn to associates really closely to the different chakras that might need more nurturing. And brown and red are really closely associated with my root chakra, which is my sa- my place of safety, my sense of security, my self-worth. I hope you're seeing a theme here, but that's just something that I've always been drawn to. Some people love the color blue. Like for example, my sister-in-law is obsessed with blue. She's always been drawn to blue. And you might be going through this and thinking, well, I always stick to pinks and reds. For me, pinks, reds, and warm tones, which is all your lower chakras. um, That has been such a common theme throughout my life. I once in a while, and and I love green, which is earthy. So think of colors and those energies and 
reflect on like the colors you're usually drawn to, but then also you can use it to pull on and draw the energy of different chakras that you want to work on. Maybe you're connecting with your heart maybe wear something green that day and maybe, or get like green jewelry. It can be very subtle, but you can have fun with the energy of your clothes as well as what that's evoking for you. So I love seeing the energetics behind everything, blending that into my manifestation practice, which starts with awareness and going forward, because I find it so much more relatable and playful and realistic for me to actually tap into these types of things. Like I think we have, there are certain um, like trends and stereotypes that really play a role, but I really encourage you like cut away from those trends and like, who are you? Who are you? It's okay if you're influenced by a trend. We all are. It's impossible to not be, but who are you without a trend? Who are you without someone else telling you what you should wear? And who are you in your unique expression? What makes you feel so good and show up as that? Allow clothing to be a way of you connecting with your personal sense of authenticity and expression. That has been so fun for me. And then going into deeper things like fabric frequencies and thinking about the sourcing of my fabrics, like linens and cottons have really high frequency energies and polyester has a really low frequency energy. Does this mean I never buy things that are polyester? No, because most workout clothes are polyester and I literally work out almost every day. So I am going to wear polyester, but am I going to live in that every day? No. During my day, I'm wearing sweats. Like this is why I'm wearing my cotton sweatpants because it's less polyester, more cotton. I think these are actually 100% cotton. But thinking about just like the frequency, everything has energy. You have energy. You can influence the energy of the things that you're interacting with every day and get playful with it. So my top three areas are food, hair care, and skin care, like hygiene basically, and then um, clothing. And those are also three like really big passions of mine. However, it's also three things I interact with every single day. Maybe for you, it's the same, or maybe for you, it's a little bit different and you can be playful with it. So I invite you to have fun with playing and blending manifestation into your lifestyle with things that you're already doing. Something simpler you can do is like while you're getting ready for the day, play some affirmations, play some guided affirmations. That can be your way of blending, but don't feel like it has to be as like super in-depth as I've been explaining. Maybe you build up to it, but don't feel the pressure. Like allow yourself to have fun with manifesting as a lifestyle. It's such a fun way for me to manifest and I've fallen in love with the journey, which just makes receiving those desires even sweeter. So If this is something you really want to learn the foundation and the fundamentals to, which I've been referring to, I have the link in my show notes for the step-by-step guide. It is on sale right now, so you can grab it. And it's a digital product. You get digital access, you get lifetime access, and it is packed with so much that I really, really think you're going to love it. So I hope this episode was inspiring for you. I hope it was fun and gave you a different perspective on manifestation. And I am excited to see you next week. Bye. Love you. Love you.